uh, good morning everyone. I'm actually here today uh, to actually talk to you about uh, real life OpenStack deployments that we've seen in the field. We actually ran a market survey uh, and one of the top reasons that we actually use OpenStack for was to actually increase operations efficiency and also to accelerate uh, the organization's entry into being able to deliver new products faster and quicker. But why do you actually need to do all that? If you look at some of the key challenges that you've actually faced in the enterprise, uh, both if it's actually mode one, as it relates to existing apps, or mode two, which is the next generation application they're trying to build, uh, one of the common complaints you have seen on existing apps is uh, it's very slow in delivery. The environments are too complex. And when it comes to cloud native apps, uh, they're actually not agile enough. And uh, the environments are not scalable. Right? I'll actually take you through what uh, real-life customers are actually doing to actually solve these four problems using OpenStack. How do you actually uh, fix uh, delivery? If you're actually an IT consumer, you actually want your IT department to be relevant in this day and age. And one of the key things is to actually accelerate delivery to actually stay relevant. One of the common issues you have is, as a developer, you actually want to build an application the workflow that you actually have to go through to actually get your environment up and running takes a lot of time today. So this is how a traditional uh, environment looks like uh, without uh, any automation, without any service management functions. If you look at here today, uh, it actually takes close to five to six hours average to actually get a VM where the actual uh, time it takes is there's a lot of time spent between queuing between different teams uh, on getting uh, the work done. There's a lot of time lost. So you're actually waiting for a long time. You're actually wasting productive time where you could actually spend time on building applications rather than waiting for infrastructure. But how do you actually fix that? So one of the goals is to actually take all the work that you've delivered uh, in the old days manually and try to actually build service functions or service catalogs to actually speed up the delivery process. You would actually see here that you actually build a request. The request actually gets validated by all the people that are actually involved in delivering the service. That gets turned into a catalog item and you actually then take the catalog item as a blueprint and actually turn it into your end user to deploy. When you make those changes, guess what happens? The time it actually took to actually build an environment just came down from 10 hours to 16 minutes. And 16 minutes is probably enough time for someone to just go get a cup of coffee and come back and your environments are up and running. So this is actually a live example of a customer. Uh, we do have a blog post. You can actually read it at the bottom. Uh, where the Yale and US University actually used OpenStack on Dell servers to actually speed up uh, the delivery of the environments within the university. And this has definitely helped them to actually help build uh, rapid solutions and actually innovate faster. Uh, the next issue you have is uh, the environment is too complex. There's too many things uh, that run your enterprise. You actually have your legacy virtualization platforms. You have hybrid cloud environments. And as a developer, you need to know where environments are sitting and how to actually build the solutions. One of the goals to actually speed up the environment is to actually optimize your existing environments by using automation and using policy-driven automation to actually make sure that the workloads are actually balanced across multiple environments better, and you actually automate it to actually increase efficiency. Uh, I'll just take you through some of the challenges that you have today. So you actually have uh, a workload that actually runs in an existing traditional virtualization cluster. You need more environments to be built. You end up building a private cloud. You actually go 
and expand it to run additional private clouds. But the problem that you have is you have too many environments that are stood up. There's no policy and governance around it. So when you actually have to move workloads to actually scale out or scale up, you probably have a problem where you're trying to rebalance workloads from your existing cluster and migrate them to your cloud environments. And because you don't have a way to uh, have governance policies around it, you'll probably see that you probably have problems migrating workloads, and your compliance teams will not agree on those migration processes. The goal is to actually have a management platform that actually ensures compliance uh, and helps you reduce cost. Prime example, we actually have a leading loyalty programs provider in Canada that actually has used OpenStack to actually reduce uh, the cost of their environments from 30 to 50 percent. They reduce their capex and their operational risk. And we also have a large global credit card company that actually has migrated more than 12,000 VMs from the traditional virtualization platform to OpenStack. And they actually did that by having a common governance framework across mode one and mode two environments and allow them to migrate workloads more efficiently. So how do you actually solve uh, the issue of not being agile? You could probably have all of these great infrastructures, but the problem that you also run into is how do you build applications faster and take advantage of the underlying infrastructure? So one of the issues you have today is you actually have siloed teams uh, that are actually working. You have a developer building applications. You have QA team actually testing code. And you have operations uh, trying to build operation functions. When the particular application is ready to go into production, the biggest question that operations has is, how do you actually take that uh, piece of code the developer wrote that was QA'd and actually take it to production? How do you actually set it up to scale up? How do you actually update it? What are the lifecycle management functions you have to adhere to? And as your head of development, uh, these are the common issues that you run into, right? Now, how do you actually reduce my dependencies? How do I scale my applications independently? And how can I actually move this functionality from development to production faster? Now, you might be thinking, what does OpenStack have to do with this? OpenStack actually brings all the different teams together by giving an optimized infrastructure. And if you're actually the head of development, you probably want to treat your infrastructure as code and make that as part of your application development process. So the silo teams move to having more cross-functional teams. And this is where all the different teams come together. And OpenStack is a great platform to prove that. You have network compute storage all working together to actually make the platform available. That actually leads to what we're calling today as microservices. Uh, microservices are a great way of actually speeding up building applications faster and giving out rapid innovation uh, to actually help build those. And using the concepts of DevOps and the container strategies today, you actually will be able to build those microservices and uh, move those applications faster. So this is an example of how FICO actually used OpenStack and with the use of OpenShift on OpenStack uh, actually helped modernize the development environment and build applications faster and reduce the time to market by 50%. The next challenge you have is uh, non-scalable infrastructure. How do you actually build a scalable infrastructure and how does it actually solve your problems? Right? Today, what you actually had is in traditional virtualization, you actually have the scale-up model. You need more infrastructure. The solution is throw more dollars at it, buy more infrastructure, and that's your solution. You need more, buy more. Right? It's always a scale-up model. Your applications are actually built uh, with the underlying hardware, and they actually expect the hardware to support uh, the speed of business. And as you need more uh, faster performance, you actually add more hardware. and uh, scale up your applications, then scaling out. 
uh, one of uh, the solutions that actually helps, and the reason why OpenStack has been so successful, is it actually allows you that scale-out model. It doesn't allow you to actually build everything up front and then grow uh, vertically. It actually allows you to scale out horizontally by adding additional compute nodes, or adding additional storage uh, in the back end, and build applications for the cloud to actually help scale out rather than scale up. With uh, standard management functions, uh, you actually can enable uh, that scale-out infrastructure to actually uh, give out all the standard functions that you would give for your enterprise, like chargeback, uh, self-service, uh, workflow management, uh, providing audit capabilities, and control policies. And OpenStack and all the different projects within OpenStack are great examples of how you actually can deliver that. Uh, with projects like <coughs> Horizon Dashboard for self-service, uh, Heat for workflow management, uh, Silometer for uh, providing telemetry, uh, are actually great projects that actually help you uh, give those functionalities to your customers. So this is an example of how you actually deliver a scalable infrastructure and provide that single pane of glass across your multiple OpenStack regions. Uh, you probably need an enterprise-grade scale-out architecture like OpenStack uh, with a common uh, service portal for your customers to consume from. So you're no longer actually adding more and more compute in one environment. You actually are spreading it across globally and actually providing resiliency as well. And using commodity hardware and open source solutions, you actually can deploy and deliver enterprise solutions better. This is an example of a customer who actually is providing a scale out, a highly scalable infrastructure. Uh, and they've actually gone down and increased their operational efficiency by 35%. It actually has helped them build uh, as IaaS uh, as a service environment uh, for their end customers. So what you've seen here today is that OpenStack is there. Uh, it's there for prime time. Enterprises are already consuming OpenStack. And uh, we feel that OpenStack is ready, and it is enterprise-grade right now. From Red Hat, you actually have the Red Hat uh, Enterprise Linux OpenStack platform. It is the officially supported uh, enterprise class OpenStack distribution uh, that's actually co-engineered with Red Hat Enterprise Linux. It is released every six months. Uh, our release cadence is two months, approximately two months after the upstream release. And the reason for that is uh, our focus is primarily on the maturity, stability, and the stability of uh, the platform itself. And we actually provide backports uh, throughout the life cycle. And our releases are actually supported over three years. We also have the community version of that. Uh, it's called RDO. So it is uh, closely aligned uh, to the trunk. And RDO is actually our upstream distribution that's actually package to run with uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux and its derivatives. <coughs> uh, why Red Hat OpenStack? You'll probably see that. Uh, ever since we actually started the uh, partner ecosystem, uh, we actually have more than 350 members uh, since the launch. Uh, we have a lot of certified solutions in our partner marketplace. Uh, because it actually runs on standard rel, uh, we actually have uh, a lot of different hardware uh, that is actually certified and supported, and we have more than 13,000 applications that are actually available on RHEL that we could consume. <coughs> yeah. If you are interested in joining Red Hat, we are hiring. You can meet us at booth P7. And we also have the Red Hat Job Social uh, at the Wolfgang Puck area between 5 and 7 today. So I think I have three more minutes, so I'm here to take any questions.